In her fanzine book Savage Messiah, Laura Oldfield Ford said, the city can be read as plimpsest, of layers of erasure and overwriting. I'd take that a step further and say that everything fits into that category in terms of Earth's processes. With this module, I've continued with the core themes of time, quotation, representation and overlay, and Roland Barthes' idea of the still taken from moving image. I've looked at phenomenology, language, place, tools, and their reciprocal impact. I've experimented with different processes to try to decentralize my own anthropomorphic view. In the summary, I've raised potential future work in the idea of mass media and a prosthetic memory. I use an anarchive process, which means that my practice initially appears chaotic, but it's about connecting wide-ranging ideas in a creative process that condenses to a final product. Walking Labs describe it as approaching matter from new perspectives in order to uncover unprecedented relationships between works. I want to get that across in the film. The film itself has become a resource for the work in progress. My work is entangled with multiple media approaches and influences. Humans are not the only social organism that build structures. Ants, bees and wasps all build complex collective structures too. Aside from the possibilities to learn more energy efficient passive construction practices from these examples, structured environments also shape the collective behaviour of societies. T.C. Lethbridge was an archaeologist and a parapsychologist. Lethbridge expanded the stone tapes concept of place memory a hypothesis suggesting that some materials can store records of past events as environmental media. Fear, joy or ghost sightings with vestigial sensory perceptive systems replaying these records. Jagadish Chandra Bose devised a system that rendered sensory reactions in implants visible, thus identifying them as living organisms. Bose also developed systems that recorded and measured reactive patterns in non-living objects. Bose was a pioneer in the use of radio and microwave optics. Paul Nash, artist and photographer. Nash's vision of genius loci, the spirit of the land, the wild privacy. The hidden lands unseen because they are not perceived, not because they are invisible. The landscape is not static but has a terrific animation. Nash's encounters with objects were informed by the developing understanding of radiation and geological time. Nash's found objects and conscious do not come from the individual psyche but from the geological land itself. I was interested in how animals may perceive the human-built environment and researched around bat echolocation. Bats perceive objects as acoustic images derived from echoes of the ultrasonic sounds they emit. Many types of animals do this, mice and dolphins. They emit frequency modulated sonar sounds and perceive the distance to targets. These can be represented as time frequency spectrograms. Understanding how birds navigate has fascinated scientists for generations, and we finally cracked that old egg. Turns out they have quantum compasses in their eyes. Easy peasy. Frank Hurley made composite images from multiple negatives to give an impression of a scene that wouldn't have been possible to capture in one action. There are similarities between being a musician and a photographer. Timing, using a tool to translate and render, being in the moment. Words, labels, genre have semantic meanings which will trigger a particular way of looking, the gaze. If I say camera, what does that mean? What impression does it give? Photographer, brutalist, blitz, church, pigeon, cornwall, copper mine, sunflower, stone circle. The word landscape will trigger a way of seeing. We can change our subconscious response by changing the language we use, areas explored by Robert McFarlane and Robert Groves. Chris Tilly described the landscape as a network of places, each of which bears meaning and is connected by movement and narratives. Casey describes place as the immediate ambience of my lived body and its history, including the sedimented history of culture and social influences and personal interests that comprise my life history. Annika de Klerk suggests a post-phenomenological relationship between technology, place and the photographer. The type of tool we use will influence the images that we make as a cultural phenomenological response. 
The environment will affect the tool too. For example, if there was raindrops on the lens or screen. In one location, I used a tool because it was the same shape as a rock formation I was making an image of. The impact of tools on the place. Footprints, tripod imprints, the sound of shutters and drives, people asking about it, the calm dark that I breathe out becoming part of the local vegetation. From my initial research into the work of TC Lethbridge, Jagadish Bose and Paul Nash, echolocation and magnetic field perception, I wondered if plants and animals sense the actions of the tool. Will it change their world view? I have continued with my previous work around John Burge's concept of the photographic quotation and rendering visible the unperceived aspects of the place. To achieve this I used a pinhole, multiple exposure large format cameras to allow unique patterns and in scape a performance of the place. I started by using multiple formats in making images at the chosen places, strict rules on the use of film, a commercial lab for processing and disposal of chemistry, digital scanning, I don't print unless there's a very specific use for the physical product. This was both a financial and environmental consideration. I did have spectrogram software, an audio-visual synthesizer made from recycled video recorders and a modular synthesizer that I use as part of my audio-visual production studio. Using existing tools in a different context was appropriate from a see what happens and sustainability review. Electromagnetic and audio field recordings at places are represented as a spectrogram of frequency against time, with intensity of colour as amplitude. Time periods run from right to left. The software allows me to transpose visual range into audio range. The audio representations of images could be manipulated by a variety of units in my modular synthesizer setup. This represents an audio range camera. I use primarily morphogene, a granular synthesis sampler and an echo and reverb unit. This is re-photographic method. The interval can be varied and, and overlap. I appreciate this is specialist and can explain further if required. The audio representation of images can be edited and manipulated in audio software before being retransposed into the visual range. Audio recordings and moving images recorded at the place were fed into an audio visual synthesizer. The sound modulated red, green and blue oscillators to produce visual reactions. The moving images can also modulate the colour oscillators to affect the image. I used archive images where possible. Roland Bartz in Camera Lucia describes the umbilical cord of physicality. The actual light that made the change connects with the viewer, a touch. For me, the idea holds for digital capture. Malou Ponty's concept of the embodied artefact that exists in the imagination resonates with all image making, rendered as ambition or memory. Plymouth was the most bombed city of World War II. The centre had to be almost completely reconstructed. The 1946 film The Way We Live documents this. The Civic Centre was a centre point of Plymouth's utopian reconstruction. It is aligned to the cardinal points. Now empty, it waits for redevelopment. Direct visual re-photography was difficult or impossible in some locations because of the original vantage points no longer existing, because of new buildings and city layout. I made digital moving images and field recordings at each place, which were then re-recorded with the field recordings and modulating the audio visual synthesizer to produce visual sound images. The re-recorded moving images were screenshot as still images. Electromagnetic and audio spectrograms made at the places were used as under or overlays as a form of photo montage. Roland Barthes described the still as a quotation. If movement in film is a framework of a permutational unfolding, the still is inside the fragment. The images have time that runs from left to right and back into the image. Representation of sound is sometimes frozen. My work in progress for this module are stills from an imaginary film I have made for my How I Made My Images module assessment documentary. I don't make practice or dummy products for reasons of resource management. Any physical aspects of a product I produce is limited run, pre-order, made to order or downloadable to reduce or remove waste production. My energy needs are provided by a net zero carbon producer and production of physical items are by producers that build net zero carbon into production. I have a fluxus approach cheap and deep, and have found examples of the kind of thing that would form the ephemera around a vinyl record release or film short, flick books, see-throughs and handbill flyers. All of these items form a collaboration participation with the receiver. With see-throughs, the receiver controls the unseen by manipulation and changing perspective. 
with flick books the receiver controls the length and direction of the still image or the animation of still images time travel handbills are given out in the locations of the imaginary film places with a web address to access to film or music it may affect their future view they may not look they may find the handbill in a pocket several months later they may throw it away or refuse to take one all the decisions and performance interaction I have screenshot my own environmental impact information and it can be paused now. From a commercial view, photography is not my sole means of creative output or financial income. Having a wide range of activities makes sustainability more achievable. Removing the commercial compromise means you have greater creative control. Since starting the course, I make less images and have decided to stop using film cameras completely. Sustainability is an economic aspect of my life. I only use second hand or borrowed equipment and sell on what I don't use. All of the specialist audio equipment I've used for this work in progress is part of a long-term working studio setup that I applied to this project. Apart from the obvious adaptions to practice on a personal level, photography can encourage and inform the sustainability agenda. Integrity is the main thing here. The rendering of multiple images from differing time periods and capture perspectives to form one image led me to look at the concept of mnemonic memory and the merging of personal and cultural memories forming a combined narrative sustained by mass cultural media a prosthetic memory of a life not directly experienced and its implications for marketisation of social and cultural life. I hope to explore these ideas in my final module.